Greetings friends and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts. I'm Del Puckett here. And in this video, I want to talk about and show you my pick collection. More specifically, my cigar box guitar pick collection. All right, but before we get started here, I did want to give a shout out to this company here called Pick World. Um, they are a custom pick company and they sent me a um, bag of these things here. These are about 200 guitar picks. And they have, they're, first of all, they're in the shape of a heart. Isn't that awesome? And they say Puckett Cigar Box Guitar. And they also have my favorite scripture, John 3.16. So, go ahead and go check these guys out. There's their number. And you can get your own customized guitar picks yourself. All right, let's get started. All right, so first off. All right, this is a true story. I saw Stevie Ray Vaughan in Albuquerque, New Mexico, 1984 at a venue called the Civic Center. And about halfway through the concert, he flicked out this pick here and it hit me, boom, right on the shoulder and then fell down into the crowd. And so nobody saw it but me. And so I took a mental note and at the end of the concert, when the lights turned on, I went back to where that, that pick was and sure enough, man, whew, picked it up and I was like, yes, awesome. And so that was 1984. Um, so I had it in my collection and a couple of years later, I was about 19... 93 or so I took it to work to show my friends and I'm not really sure what happened but I might have put it in I thought I put it in a pocket that had a, maybe a hole in it or something because the pick went a missing and I was so sad for years and years it was lost and then about the year 2000 when my wife became pregnant with our youngest son she wanted me to get his his uh um or her her maternity clothes down from the uh, the top shelf of the closet, right? So I got the ladder and I went up to the top shelf of the closet and I started pulling the box and what should fall down? In slow motion. I was like, yes, there it is. So I, so I picked it up and it's been under lock and key ever since then. So about the year 2005 or so, I was in the break room at work heating up my burrito in the microwave and there was a magazine there. So I just picked up the magazine and I started thumbing through it. And I came across this page here. And this page was an interview, an article about a gentleman who was a pick collector. The, na the gentleman's name is Phil Gajewski. And um, so anyhow, so this article here, he talks about his pick collection. And he gets to the bottom of here. It says the Holy Grail. So I started reading, it says, the most sought after pick is an authentic Stevie Ray Vaughan pick. Those goes for upwards of a thousand bucks. Again, this is 20 years ago. Because he's among the top, top guitarists ever and he's dead. Therefore, the number of his picks is finite. And he wasn't big on giving them away. I'd love to get my hands on one. And it's got his email here. So anyhow, so I emailed him and I told him I, I got one of those authentic Stevie Ray Vaughan get guitar picks and he's like send me a picture so i sent him a picture and he emailed back to me he goes you got a, a a genuine one authentic one which got me to thinking how can you tell how do you know that this isn't a counterfeit or a replication or a duplication um but he knew so so for some some reason these guys these pick collectors they 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 can tell so i have the holy grail of guitar picks in my guitar pick collection, the Stevie Ray Vaughan Authentic. Yay! This pick belonged to Tommy Emmanuel. Now, if you watch this video right here, you'll see the guitar that I built for Tommy Emmanuel that I gave it to him and that he jammed. Oh, we jammed together, actually. And then I also got him to sign this cigar box here one of these days i'll build one out of here but anyhow so look how thick that pick is oh my gosh 
And this is just stiff, stiff, stiff. This is a man's pick right here. So, Tommy Emmanuel. Next is this green, flimsy, thin little guy that I got from Ty Tabor of King's X. Ty Tabor, King's X. Ah! Next up is this beautiful Liberty Silver Half Dollar. This one here was made by my next door neighbor, Dirk Biddington. He makes these uh, these awesome like rings and whatnot from old silver coins. So check this out. The neat thing about these metals is that you get that effect right. All these cool effects. But isn't that just awesome? Thanks a lot, Dirk. Next up, my son-in-law made me this one here out of hammered and stamped copper. He is the silversmith. Daniel Bishop. Anyhow, so check this out. Next up is another copper pick that has been flamed. And this is made from a friend of mine named Greg Gowan in Albuquerque, New Mexico, who does copper art. And isn't that just beautiful? Flamed copper. Have you ever seen one of these? It's called a jellyfish. And it's got a plastic handle. And it looks to be like what, these, these look to be like guitar strings or something that are just kind of stuck in there. And then of course they're at an angle. So there's several things that you can do with one of these jellyfish. One of them is, is if you just use it as a normal pick, it kind of gives it this soft brush, brushy sound. But check this out, you can actually use this kind of like stroking it up and down like this, like you almost get like a bow sound. So the jellyfish, these things are interesting. 
quite interesting. Have you ever seen a stylus pick? The bottom of this thing here has got like this big old fat little tip on it. And this is made for like teaching you how to like do speed picking because you can only use the tip of the pick on the string because if you get past it, the string will catch and you won't be able to pick. So you can only pick using the tip. So this is kind of a training, um, a training mechanism to teach you to use just the tip of the pick. So it's made, made for like, if you're gonna learn how to do speed pick. Because if you go too fast, it'll, you, can't, you can't get over that hump because that hump will like pre prevent you from picking. So you can only use the tip. So kind of maybe kind of frustrating. You wouldn't want to use this to perform, but if you're like tr teaching yourself to do speed tremolo picking, then maybe this guy would be the, the pick for you to pick. Some guitarists use their fingernails, but me, I have a bad habit of biting my nails. So I have to use one of these guys. So, and then they also make them for your thumb, thumb pick. So, I don't know, I guess maybe you could use them together. I think maybe they use these for banjos or whatever. But um, I have no idea how to, how to use these things at all. I'd be too busy banging the top there. So I'm sure this is good. I'd have to learn how to use it, but thumb picks and finger picks or fingernail picks, whatever. Next, have you ever seen these things here? Pick punch. It says here, never run out of picks again. So how you use these things here, this is like a stapler kind of a thing. It, it's, a, it's just a pick punch, right? So check this out. You gotta reach into your pocket and Pull out your credit card, in this case here my Costco card, it's got my ugly mug on there from years ago. Let's see here, see if I can salvage myself. And then you just kind of, just like that, and then you got a nice little pick. What's in your wallet? Have you ever seen a bone pick? Look how thick that is. This is bone. And I must admit it has an awesome sound. Bone. All right, so now I'm gonna rapid fire you a whole bunch of picks here. My kids used to be in a band called Poema, and one of their hit songs was called Boys and Bugs. And this is left over from that time period. We went on a recruiting trip to Liberty University, and I found this when I was walking through the halls of their music department, Liberty University. Obviously, Every time you go to Guitar Center, you gotta help yourself to the free picks. I love these jazz 
three style picks. They're stiff and they're they're pointy and you know I just I there was a whole season of my life when I was they make big ones and small ones of these guys here. And um I used to buy these things by the pound. Love those things. I also used to like these nylon Jim Dunlops. I think these are the um, 0.73. Awesome pick. Awesome pick. I always find them in the washing machine in the dryer. Um, oh, yeah. Check out this one here. You got the front. And the back. Um, of course, I got the credit cards and the debit cards. Nothing better than to recycle your old debit card. Turn it into a guitar pick. Oh, yeah, and then the keys to the hotel rooms. The extended stay, whatever. I should turn those back in, but I figured, ah, they make perfect guitar picks. So everywhere I go... I, if I come across a guitar pick, I always make sure that it stays in my pocket. I'm kind of a pick kleptomaniac, so to speak. Um, I'm a sucker for these turtle shell type of picks. I just think they're beautiful. And then you got these kind here with the grip on them. That's in case you start sweating or whatever like that, and the, you got the little grip grippies on there. Those are kind of cool. Of course, the Intel picks. That's using the pick punch. Oh yeah, what I like to do is get these coffee cans. The plastic on here is like perfect for guitar picks seriously man these these here are probably my favorite ones these days here and I just like when they get a little bit worn the sound of these things here and just my opinion just my opinion I love the sounds it kind of gives the kind of a rubbery thud So, Folgers, I'm telling you what, man, awesome guitar picks. There's probably about 50 picks in this thing here. And then, of course, the motorcycle picks. And these, these guys here, these are the nylon Jim Dunlops. And you can never have you can never have enough picks. Anyhow, I'm going to show you right now how to make a pick using money. First thing I do is I get a quarter, and then I get a pick that's going to be about the right size, and then a sharpie. And then what I do is I just outline the pick in the shape of the pick and then this is what I do here I kind of created these um, pliers using Gorilla Glue and wire so that I could grab this thing here and this way I don't burn my fingers I know that's kind of ugly and stuff like that, but it works really good. This way I can grind with my grinder these edges off and I don't burn my fingers here. So let's do that right now. So here we are at the grinding wheel with our pliers and our quarter. Let's go to town. Next, I just get a little file and take off the burrs and make the edges smooth, especially the tip. 
And then I'm gonna wet sand it. And then use my buffing wheel, which is on the other side of this guy. And get this thing just so it's smooth as glass. I like to take it all the way up to 2000 grit sandpaper and just rub it smooth, 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 smooth. And you can feel it. You can feel it when it gets nice and smooth. But the ultimate test is how, how does it feel when you play. And then you can call heads or tails. Heads I win, tails you lose. Ah, where'd it go? Ah. Oh well, make another one. All right, so that's it for this video. I will leave you with some profound words of wisdom. You can pick your friends and you can pick your nose, but you can't pick your friend's nose. <laughs> All right, no, seriously, you can never have enough picks. So I would suggest, I would suggest experimenting with different materials because different materials produce different sounds. All right, be sure to like and subscribe and share and comment, and I will see you in the next video.